you ever questioned the divinity of Christ? This question was at the heart of a provocative Christian heresy named after Arius, a priest from Alexandria. Arius dared to challenge the traditional view of Christ's divinity. He asserted that Christ was not truly divine, but a created supernatural being, not quite human. He believed that God alone is self-existent and immutable, while Christ, created by God, had a beginning and was finite. This radical idea sparked a theological controversy that would shape the course of Christianity. Despite being branded a heretic, Arius's teachings gained ground. The aftermath of the Council of Nicaea was not the end of Arianism, but rather the beginning of its rise. Arianism found favor, particularly during the reign of Constantius II, a committed follower of Arius's teachings. From 337 to 361, Arianism made significant inroads into the Roman Empire, influencing both the religious and political landscape. Arius's belief that Christ was a supernatural being, but not quite divine, resonated with many, leading to the expansion of Arianism. It became more than just a heretical belief. It evolved into a formidable force that shaped the course of the Roman Empire for nearly a quarter of a century. The spread of Arianism was not limited to the boundaries of the empire, but reached beyond, influencing and reshaping the belief systems of various Germanic tribes. Arianism, once a heretical belief, had become a powerful force in the Roman Empire. But like all things, Arianism's time in the sun was limited. As the fourth century dawned, the reigns of Christian emperors Gratian and Theodosius marked a significant shift, pushing Arianism towards its decline. These emperors were staunch supporters of the Nicene Creed, which professed the Son as of one substance with the Father, a belief in direct opposition to Arian doctrine. The final blow to Arianism came in the year 381, during the First Council of Constantinople. This council, a gathering of bishops from across the empire, firmly approved the Nicene Creed and officially prescribed Arianism. This marked the end of Arianism as a significant force within the Roman Empire. Yet despite its official condemnation, Arianism didn't vanish overnight. Its influence lingered on particularly among some Germanic tribes where it survived until the end of the 7th century. And even today, echoes of Arius's teachings can be found in the beliefs of Unitarians and Jehovah's Witnesses. These groups share in large part the Arian view of Christ as not quite divine, but a supernatural being created by God. Arianism may not have prevailed, but its influence echoes through time, challenging us to question and explore our understanding of divinity. As we delve into the complexities of these ancient debates, we're reminded that the quest for understanding is a journey, not a destination.